Well, hello, everybody. This is Byron King with Investor Intel, and we are today going to talk about the nickel market, as in the metal nickel, not so much the little nickel that you put in your pocket, but the nickel market. And we're going to talk with Terry Lynch, who has been in the mines and metals market for many, many years. Uh, hello, Terry. Uh, why don't you tell the viewers, you know, who, who are you? What, why, why do you know anything about nickel? How did you, how did you learn this? Hi, Myron. Good to, good to be with you again. Uh, yeah, I've been in the metals mining space as an investor for maybe 30 plus years. Uh, dates me, but, uh, uh, and then I started running a, uh, actually a copper gold company about 10 plus years ago. And we moved into nickel about two and a half years ago. And, and, uh, thinking that it would be a, a you know really good commodity to get into with what we foresaw as the becoming electrification movement. And as it turns out, we made, you know, made an incredible deal on a, a great project and we're advancing that. And so, you know, so as a result of you know having a you know a nickel prospective nickel mine, we've 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 got learned over all things nickel, you know. So we're nice. uh, you know we're we're dangerous now. We we know a, a little bit about nickel market. Well, I, I, I suspect you probably know more than more than, more than you're letting on here. So uh, people out there may have heard that there's a, a nickel boom going on or nickel looming shortages or what have you. Uh, what, what, you know, when people reach into their pocket, at least if they still use you know, normal cash, they, they, they find those nickels. But what, what's going on with nickel? What's going on with the nickel market? Yeah, so, so, so nickel, what's interesting about the nickel market is you know, fundamentally what underpins it is uh, – the theme of urbanization. So as people are moving from villages to cities or towns, you know, they're, they're, they're buying pots and pans, fridges and stoves. And that's basically, uh, you know, uh, got stainless steel in it and stainless steel is, has a coating of nickel. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the stainless steel market is really what drives the, the big drive of, of nickel. So about 70% of all nickel consumption is for stainless steel. So mm -hmm. as, as urbanization continues on and that, that stainless steel market's grown at 6% compound annual growth rate for a number of years. So that's a, a heady number, as you would know, uh, as an economist, it's, it's a big number and it's continuing on. It sort of rises with the population as, as India and Indonesia and China become more urbanized and right you know, the uh, Africa and South America, it's basically just one of those things you can't stop. So well, that, that's interesting that's, when, when you say 6% a year, I mean, anybody out there who, I don't want to throw too much math at you, but there's that rule of 72, where yes, if you take the number 72 every years. Yep. And, and divide it by six, that's 12. So you're going to double your nickel demand in 12 years, just by stainless steel. But, but now we've got another issue because a lot of people are we're going to use that nickel in, in these batteries that we're going to drive around on our in our cars here. Tell what's going right. on. Right. So 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 the second driver in the in the electric market or in the nickel market is electrification. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, you know, nickel is is very uh, good store of elect, uh, of electrons. Mm -hmm. So so in the battery markets, um, you know, it, it used to be sort of initially when they started with the batteries, it was like a third. Uh, you know, it was like nickel, manganese, and 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 and, uh, and cobalt, and 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 uh, with the lithium underpinning. And so now it's it's it probably it's moving towards more like 50, 60 percent nickel, and potentially in some of these batteries it'll be more like eighty percent nickel. So, um, you know the uh, you know there's going to in the in the in the, in the market there's going to be uh, uh, a number of ways to sort of consume nickel. In, in, and I think in the battery market itself, there's going to be if you're like if you're just driving around town and you're not going to use a car a lot, you may use no nickel. You may have an like an iron phosphate battery that that doesn't really require a ton of charging, but but uh, can can because you're not using it a lot it may, may may make sense for smaller light vehicles. But if you're in North America where you're driving long distances, you know, or you're commuting on a regular basis you need, you know, much more responsive, you know, and, and, and nickels, the, the battery of choice at that point. So, so generally speaking, the forecasts are to move in the nickel market from 10% to 50% over the next, uh, in terms of its percentage of the actual battery market. So, so that would obviously have a huge impact on, on, uh, on nickel demand. I'm uh, obviously I'm in the nickel business. So I'm, I'm pro nickel and I believe it's got a bright future. 
I don't, however, uh, believe it's ever going to get to 50% of the nickel market. I just think that, uh, you know, all the things that would have to happen for that would not be good for humanity, you know, because he, it, it just, uh, but I, I do see it getting to 25, 30%. And that would be still require a boatload of more nickel than we can visualize finding at this moment in time. Well, in terms of world production, I mean, you know, there, there's the traditional sources. I mean, uh, Russia, for example, you have a company called Norilsk, which is one of the great nickel producers <clears throat> of the world. But, yep. you know, for, for various reasons that we don't have to explain, I mean, Russia's becoming more and more of, a, of an off-limits uh, uh, supplier. And then we've got Indonesia, we've got the Philippines. Uh, uh, in North America, there was Boise's Bay, which in northern Canada. But uh, is, is our... I mean, clearly we are going to need more nickel. Are there, uh, to talk a little bit about the, the supply side looking forward for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. I mean, they, they say that we'll need like, a, you know, 60 to plus mines uh, over the next, you know, uh, several years. And it's, if it was easy to find nickel, there'd be a lot more nickel mines. It's bloody hard one to find, especially in uh, high uh, purity because uh like for example, you mentioned touched on the Philippines and and Indonesia, which have some of the biggest supplies of nickel out there. Generally, they're in laterites mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and versus sulfides. Like we're in the power nickels in the sulfide business. Mm -hmm. um, so the laterites generally have you know big tonnage, like you know may have a billion tons of nickel, but it might only be 0.2 percent. Yeah, let's so, just dive in for people out there who don't yeah. get the the, the technical jar. A laterite is a heavily weathered rock. It's mostly clay, but it has a lot of nickel in it. Whereas when we're talking about the sulfides, we're talking about actual, you know, nickel sulfide minerals with much higher grade and a whole different way of processing them in terms of the chemistry, the energy content, uh, the whole logistics of the whole thing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good that's a good understanding. So, so the so the nickel laterites they might be 0.2 to 0.3 percent nickel. Mm -hmm. uh, EQ and, and, you know, we might be like in power nickel, we're at like 1.5 to 2% nickel EQ. So mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're literally seven, eight times richer. So what does that mean? Well, it means you're processing seven or eight times less rock. Mm -hmm. uh, so from an energy perspective that, that impacts you both in moving it and then the energy it takes to actually manufacture it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so generally speaking, you know, these laterite rocks, uh, manufacturing, are considered sort of dirty nickel, you know, and, and, and because it it takes such amount of energy to to process and such a lot of stripping to actually get the tonnage you need to make it work. So so there's you know there's sensitivity you know in 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 you know in if you believe in the the green uh, economy and uh, you know decarbonization you know you, you don't want to be spending more energy to generate the nickel than the nickel can save for you in the future, you know, generally speaking. So, mm -hmm. so with nickel sulfides, it's actually net positive. You, we can actually do decarbonize in a, in a big way, especially, mm -hmm. you know, in, in our case, we'll be doing ours all with the hydroelectric power. So it'll be the greenest nickel mine in history, but, but, but generally speaking, uh, philosophically, you want to be, you know, favoring those projects mm -hmm. and maybe not the, uh, the others, you know? So, uh, however, you know, this is this is why, like, I, you know, when we talk about forecasts of demand and, and how things can go, I just don't see it. Uh, it, 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 you know, it can't, you know, go to fifty percent because you'd have to be harvesting these laterites in in a big way, and I just don't see how that is economic or beneficial to the environment. So I think at some point, common sense will take place. Okay, well, we'll end it here because we we like to keep a certain time limit yep. on these on these uh on these investor intel talks because our our viewers time is valuable and to the viewers out there we thank you very much for watching uh this was terry nickel uh or terry terry lynch of a company called power nickel and uh we'll we'll have we'll have more with terry in other uh in another broadcast thank you